the blessings of faithfulness in a world like us where everybody is trying to do their own thing where people are more conscious of themselves than God where people think of more of themselves than God faithfulness is scarce even Jesus Jesus was talking to the church as at that time and Jesus said to them he said when the son of man cometh we live still find faith we list him meet faithful men and faithful women he says it's going to come to a point where faithful men and faithful women will be scarce and that is one of the sign of the last days where the Bible says he said men shall be lovers of their selves men shall be lovers of their selves men will be more concerned about their selves and because of that a lot of people's love for God are getting colder they are experiencing what we call lukewarmness where their heart is being drifted from God to the world I have said it before and let me say it tonight again the time we are in is a time where you truly know those that are genuinely following God the season we are in is a season where God will be separating the shaft from the wheat it's a season where the love of many will be defined it's a season where people lose interest for the things of God and let me say something to us it has been prophesied in the Bible days it said in the last days it said the love of many not some how many many shall was cold the word was cold simply talks about that it shall go down it said men shall be lovers of themselves in the last days and that is why by the help of the Holy Spirit tonight I want us to consider a topic that I strongly believe in my heart it's going to be of blessing and help to us let's turn our Bible to the book of Proverbs chapter 28 verse 20 quickly I'm speaking on the blessings of faithfulness Proverbs chapter 28 verse 20 listen to this a wise man said faithfulness at your current level is what will qualify you for promotion to the next level faithfulness at your current level is what qualifies you for promotion to the next level that is we are praying lord promote me promote me financially promote me in business promote me in health promote me in life the question that god will pose to you is have you been faithful at your level it is the current level how you are faithful at that level is what will determine if god will consider you for promotion promotion is a dimension of reward and that reward comes from genuine faithfulness i'm not talking about faithfulness there are many people that are faithful but not faithful proverbs chapter 28 verse 20 quickly let's read the place a faithful man shall abound with what blessings but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. God is always going to churches checking for faithful men. Now, where we read said, a faithful man we abound with blessings. With what? Talk to me. With what? But he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent 
one of the reasons why people refuse taking responsibility to be faithful is because of quick arrival many people are too conscious of self i want this i want this and because they are too conscious of self the bible said they will not be innocent i want you to understand tonight that faithfulness is one of the most rewarding virtue on earth the most rewarding virtue on earth is faithfulness faithfulness will take an ordinary man that is nothing and position him in the corridor of honor faithfulness i will show you from bible how faithfulness lifted men from nothing to become something receive grace to be faithful i thought you say better amen i said receive grace to be faithful Now let me say something to you. One of the most cast commodity in church is faithfulness. You can see a church of 200 people. People that are faithful, they are not up to five. Like I said, this is a season where you know those that are genuinely faithful. I was talking to a friend that said, this coronavirus of a thing, it will blow some people away from God. Why? Because their heart was not with God at the first place. Their heart was not with who? At the first one place. Faithfulness. There is nothing people are going through in the world today that people haven't gone through. There is nothing. Even there was a generation that went through more difficult times than now. We had people were eating their children. Two women agreed to eat their children. One ate his own, brought his own. There was a generation like that but in the midst of that generation they were still men that were faithful to god faithful to who to god that is faithfulness is a scarce commodity very scarce that's why jesus speaking he said a faithful man who can find one of the places where the Bible recommends finding is, it was talking about wife. He said, either find it a wife, find it what? A good thing. And it is not just a wife, a virtuous woman. Now, he was not talking about faithfulness. He said, faithfulness, who can find it? That is his curse, is rare. In this generation, faithfulness is rare. I wrote something here. Listen to this. Faithfulness has become one of the rarest and scarcest virtues on earth today. It is so scarce that the Bible says in Proverbs 26. Let's read Proverbs 26. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can what who can find that is it's not cheap to come by a faithful man who can find that also is applicable to a woman a faithful woman who can find see in the fear of faithfulness no matter what a church go through faithful men are never moved I want you to understand that no matter the, what a church go through faithful men are never what moved faithful men always finish the race unfaithful men always drop on the roadside because God never said to us that the journey will be rosy he now said when you go through the fire I will what be with you when you go through river, it will not overflow thee. That is, that established the fact that in our Christian journey, there will be seasons of turbulence. But what keeps us together is faithfulness. Is what? 
see, listen to this. If you read Proverbs, uh, uh, Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8 from verse 30, I want to show something there. Romans chapter 8 from verse 30. Oh, glory. Romans chapter 8 from verse 30. He said, moreover, whom he didn't predestinate, then he also called. And who is also called, then he also glorified, justified. And who is also justified, then he also glorified. Verse 31, quickly. We are reading it to like the last verse. Whom sh what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can what? Be against us. Verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered, read him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things keep reading who shall lay anything to the charge of god's elect it is god that justified verse 34 who is he that condemned it is christ that was die yea rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of god who also make it intercession for us? Verse 35. Who shall separate us from what? The love of Christ. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. You see, that was Paul speaking. Paul was telling us his experiences. Now, he now went further to say, he said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distress, shall persecution, shall famine, shall nakedness, or peril, or sword. Verse 36. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are what? More than a conqueror. Through him that loveth what? Us. That is, Paul went through a lot. He went through famine. He went through persecution. He went through scandal. He went through all manner of discomfort, atmosphere, situations. But he went, he, he now came to a point where he now concluded by saying, in all these things, we are more than what? A conqueror. That is a faithful man speaking. For Paul was so faithful that he got to a point that we're prophesying his death. Paul was so faithful to God that he got to a point that we're prophesying his death. That if he keep preaching, if he go to a particular town to preach, that he's going to die. After the guy finished prophesying, Prophet Agabus, Paul told him. He said, the same place you said I shouldn't go. That's where I'm going. Hello? That's what? That's where I'm going. He was so faithful. By just being committed to God. Do you know what that established? It established the fact that being committed and faithful to God gives you an edge. You can't compare a man that is 105% loyal to God with a man that is just playing church. This season, I now discovered people playing church in this lighthouse. I'm telling you. He said, what shall separate us from the love of God? You can't be faithful to God and operate at the same level with a man that is not faithful to God. Never. It will be an injustice to the order of God to reward you the same. And God is a just God. Faithfulness. So much of faithfulness. Shout it louder. That is, God is calling us into faithfulness. In the Bible days, there were men that were extremely faithful and they stood out. One of them was Daniel. Daniel was a faithful man. 
Daniel 6 4. Quickly, let's read that place. Daniel 6 4. Genesis 4. Let's read. Then the president and the priest sought to find occasion against Daniel consigning the kingdom, but they couldn't find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, as much as he was what? Well, he was faithful. Neither was there any error of fault found in him as far he was faithful as much as he was faithful daniel was so faithful that they could not found any fault in him faithfulness it is no hustling that that puts you on top is faithfulness it's not struggling that puts you on top is faithfulness god has a way god can put your name in the heart of a man just a contact will set you for life faithfulness faithfulness we are in a generation where men are no longer faithful daniel became so faithful that he rise to become a major man in his time by being faithful to God. Now listen. Look at how this thing played out in the time of Daniel. He was faithful to a point that he could not deny his God. Many Christians have denied God. In the name of struggling. In the name of hustling. Situations will come up to prove where your heart is situations situations now quickly what then is faithfulness I'll give you like one or two definitions faithfulness equals undivided loyalty and attention towards God and man I come again faithfulness is undivided loyalty and attention towards God and man that is inside faithfulness is loyalty is an undivided loyalty towards God and man you can't say you are loyal to God and you are not loyal to man. The two works together. Undivided attention. Not that your leg, one leg in, one leg out. They can't predict if you will be there. They just know that you are there. They just know that you are consistent. Somebody say undivided attention. Say it louder. Say like a Christian. Two, let me give you another definition. What is faithfulness? Faithfulness is the absolute and unwavering commitment. Mark that word. Absolute and unwavering commitment to God and man. On this note, you must make a personal decision. To be faithful in all in your dealings with your fellow men or God. Now listen. Undivided. Someone say undivided. Say it louder. Undivided. Three. Let me give you the last one. We we'll move on. Faithfulness equals consistency of character. It equals trustworthiness and dependability. Lastly, faithfulness means performing 
to expectation. There are people you can't trust. There are people you can't depend on. They are not faithful. Brother X, you are the one doing something today. You won't see them in church. They are not dependable. Nobody rise into leadership without faithfulness. Faithfulness is the ladder that takes you up. You might start small, but faithfulness will take you there. Faithfulness is the ladder that takes you up, sir. It's not charisma. It's not grammar. It's faithfulness. It says, see that a man. Eh? That is faithfulness. And I said, don't despise the days of little beginning. A faithful man in a little thing will, become, will still become great. A faithful man with a little business. A faithful man in a place in church will still become the head. You don't fight for position. You just become faithful and become the head. When you fight for position and you gain it, very soon you lose it. But when you earn it by faithfulness, you can't lose it. You can't displace a faithful man. No matter the person that gang up, let them gang up to remove you. Once you are faithful, your faithfulness will speak. Hello? Because when they remove you, they will know something is missing. But when you were not, if you were not faithful, when they remove you, not to be sure as if they removed you. Hello? When a faithful man is not in church for one month, his absence will be fed. But an unfaithful man, even though he's not in church for one year, you will know. Hello? So much of faithfulness. You see, faithfulness is so powerful that God places that order there for the rising of men. Men ride on faithfulness, not on prayer. Prayer is good. Prayer clears the atmosphere. But the master key that keeps you, that sells you faster than any spiritual weapon is the weapon of faithfulness. In the rain, you are there. In the sun, you are there. Consistently consistent. You will climb. You just climb. One of the reasons why Jacob crossed one of the sons was because of instability. You know the name of that son? Huh? He said, Roman, he said, you are the, the excellency of my strength. My firstborn. After praising the guy, after giving him accolades, called him all sorts of name. The end is garnished everything with costs. He said, You shall not succeed. You shall not do well because you are unstable. You are what? Unstable. Unstable people are not faithful people. See, listen to when you go to a church as at this time where they are faithful men. Even though church members you are not there, you will see all the leaders. This is the best time any smart pastor knows those that are faithful. It's not when all the system, everything is working well. This is the best time. Where the economy is not normal. Because an unfaithful person goes with the trend. Because the economy is not normal, we act on normal. Am I speaking to a church here? faithfulness great ministries is built on the shoulders of faithful men on, faith, on the shoulders of faithful men not on the shoulders of faithful men on the shoulders of faithful men sir men that are loyal men that are not moved by side talks because any ministry that is rising there must be side talks Hello. Now, the side talks is good for the ministry. Do you know why? The side talks help the pastor to remove the unfaithful people. That's what the side talk does. Because it's more dangerous to carry on rebels and the church is growing. And there, when you get to the top, you will crash everything. But when the work is growing and there is constant filtration, it shows the work is healthy. That is, some people leaving church is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength being at work. Am I speaking to somebody here? I understood that on time. That is why no matter who leaves this church, doesn't affect the church. 
Because the Bible talked about sons. He said, a son will abide in the house forever. A true son doesn't leave the house. A true son. He said, a son. That, is, that, that talks to daughters too. He said, a son abide in the house forever. Not that today you are hot, tomorrow you are cold, you are like wind, you are like this. No, 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 no. You are consistent. Be blessed. I thought you said better, amen. amen. I said be blessed. Amen. Now quickly, what are the reward of faithfulness? How does faithfulness reward a man? What are the blessings that faithfulness brings? One, faithfulness brings what called divine pleasant or divine surprises divine surprises two faithfulness places you in the corridor of authority anyone who is faithful must be positioned in authority just like in the case of joseph the son of jacob now let's read genesis chapter 39 verse 4 to 6 genesis 39 i want us to see that place it was talking about joseph genesis 39 4 to 6. Genesis 39, 4 to 6. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's read. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and made him overseer over his house, and all that he had, he put into his hand. But before Joseph was made an overseer, Joseph was genuinely faithful. You still remember the story of Potiphar's wife? When he came to Joseph, he said, lie with me. That is a test of faithfulness. Your master have traveled, lie with me. And Joseph said, my master puts everything in my care, except you. And I went for it. He said, how can I do this wicked thing and sin against God and my master? Faithfulness faithfulness verse 5 and it came to pass from that time that he had made him over in his house and over all that he had that the lord blessed the egyptians house for joseph's sake a faithful man has the capacity to attract god's blessing when you put a faithful man in leadership there's progress when you make a faithful man a head of a body there is progress one of the things that I've kept this ministry going at is that I'm faithful to God. Faithful to Him. Faithful to Him. And the blessings of the Lord was upon all that He had in the house and in the field. Verse 6. Verse 6. And He left all that He had in Joseph's hand. And He knew not what He had save the bread which he did eat and joseph was a goodly person and well favor faithfulness can can you be entrusted with with vital information and you will keep it or you just know little things and everybody your mouth will run do you know do you know i want to tell you this one faithfulness one of the way we test faithful men is by information faithfulness somebody say faithfulness that is faithfulness places you in the corridor of power One of the criteria to put a man in the palace, he must not be a tape bearer. A tape bearer does not need the corridor of power. Who is a tape bearer? A tape bearer is someone that talks anyhow. He doesn't know how to cut to his mouth. He can talk to you. He can call you. That's a tape bearer. You are blessed. I thought you say better, amen. Another blessings of faithfulness is divine promotion 
divine promotion and progress. Faithfulness at your current level is what qualifies you for promotion to the next level. So much of faithfulness. At your current what? At your current level. Is what qualifies you for the next level. If you are not faithful at this level, forget about promotion. Faithfulness at your current at this current level. Are you faithful? Can you say you are faithful? Divine promotion. So much a divine promotion. Every genuine faithful man is a candidate for promotion. Every genuine faithful man is a candidate for promotion you know i've said it before you don't pray for promotion just be faithful that's where people are missing it oh god promote me oh god promote me and the lord said the level you are in now you are not even faithful coronavirus you didn't come to church is that faithfulness and the Lord said, even this level now, you can't even come to church regularly. You want me to give you more money so that you insult my servant? Can I say something to you? There are some people now, the reason why they are not blessed eh, is their heart. God knows that if he gives you more than what you have now, you can even insult pastor. You've not even gotten anything. you still in your closet. You think negative sometimes about pastor how will god bless you uh, this man is disturbing too much this man said to the this god say he might not hear but i hear he might not hear but i what <laughs> i hear stay for that your hundred thousand two hundred thousand that one and they keep you normal praise the lord you will not end like the prodigal son i thought you say man Divine promotion is in faithfulness. Somebody said divine promotion. God will only elevate those that are faithful to him. He doesn't want to elevate rascals. You know there are rascals in churches that can talk to anybody in there. Talk to pastor in there. They don't send. They will tell you, hey, God is the God of all. Yeah, God is the God of all. If you know what it takes to stand here to preach, you will know. A man opened Bible to preach. Somebody was in the congregation and fired something to him. Started tearing his Bible. See, do you know why you need to honor your pastor? Work with your pastor. Every word that comes here that liberates people, there's always an attack. You don't know. You not join people talking, running down with pastor. Blah, 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 blah. There is a generational cause. See, one of the way a man dies faster is just to speak to a grace that has blessed you. Speak against the grace. As rascally as Elijah, Elisha followed to the end. Hello? follow to the end faithfulness see listen to this listen to this any man that god is truly helping has a weakness do you know why that weakness will be there forever so that the man will not take the glory so that in his secret he can say ah, god you are the one doing this thing you are the one he said let no flesh glory in my presence you are the one now when you now see the weakness let's say hunger or something you now capitalize on that and react there is a judgmental stroke that goes with that that's why people instead of carrying blessings in churches they carry curse am i talking to somebody here in the church the two is present to, at this altar now there are two 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 stuff right here blessings and curse there are things I can't open my mouth to tell people now. 
The Lord said, you're the one. You can't reverse it. There are people that die mysteriously. The death came. They didn't manage themselves. When you come to steal in a church, you just die mysteriously. Even though you are working in a church. Unless they didn't pray from the altar. Hello? Faithfulness. Somebody say faithfulness. See, if you want to know, Mama, if you want to know the, what pastor is all about, just walk around town. You, you see pastors that are under their suffering. That when you're under a church and you see grace, just know God is working sometimes. Be faithful. Can I shock you? If you are faithful to this grace, you must be blessed. I am saint. I know I'm saying. I know. See, I know what I'm saying. Can I say something to you? A friend was talking to me, sir, this afternoon. He said, he said, he said, are you sure lighthouse members know what they have? I said, what do you mean? He said, the way you walk, if you walk like that in a secular firm, you can't be a poor man. I said, serious. He said, yes. He said, you're a worker. We grew up together. I'm a worker. I know that. They were working on my office. I was telling Frank, I said, Penty tonight, Penty tonight. I don't want us to, I, tomorrow is we have to do something else. That my friend was not talking to me. He said, if you walk in a secular field like that, you can't be a poor man. I write every day. If you are faithful to this grace, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but there's a perfect grace here. That you can enjoy when you are genuinely faithful. I've seen people come to this church without thinking of owning a car in their life. And in less than one year, they dedicate the car. Hello? One of my daughters, sit down. One of my daughters came to tell my wife on Sunday, say we are already roofing our building. Roofing. House that we went to pray for. January. In less than five months. From church. If this, those people want to buy a car, can they buy a car? There is a grace here. Faithfulness. You see, one of the reasons why people become unfaithful is a worker in church. Your best friend is a boy that drinks at the park, drinks at the car wash, smoke. When you are there, you'll be saying nonsense about the church. Before you know your faith about the church will be going down. Hello? You that used to be vibrant for church, your church, your, your faith will be going down. Because your best friend is somebody that always insult pastors. Is somebody that always insult church. The reasons why you see some people don't come to church because of this lockdown, they have listened to stupid talks online. Some of their friends say, what's the essence of going to church? Ah! Coming to church is a command. Is what? A command. It's a command. Command by God. You hear people say God is everywhere. True, God is everywhere. You are everywhere, but you are more real in your house. Am I right? There are some kind of stuff you want to give to somebody. You will tell them, meet me in the house. Am I right? There are blessings you can't collect until you come to church. Until you come to church. There are people that during this lockdown, because they've not gone to church, they have imbibed some kind of sickness they can't even explain. Is this one says it's not coronavirus. Is coro something something virus something church is a spiritual chemist house that as you sit there now there is a bleeding of the blood over you you don't need to see it you don't need to feel it it's just happening that's why the bible said they go from strength to strength every one of them that appear before who god in we are is higher strength is renewed Strength is renewed. Now for an adult to sit at home weekly or Sunday is because you don't have understanding. And one of the highest form of unfaithfulness is not appearing before the house of your father. You now, you now, you have ten sons and all of them scatter different places. They don't come to the house as a heavenly father. How will you feel? Huh? God is not happy that the church is scattered. 
You think God is happy? God is not happy. Be faithful to him. And faithfulness starts from little, little things. There are people that are not tithers. You are not faithful. You eat your tithe. If because of lockdown, you are not faithful. They will see you in church today. They won't see you tomorrow. You are not faithful. Somebody say faithfulness. Say it louder. Shout it louder. Rise up on your feet. Lift up your two hands to heaven. Go ahead and pray in the spirit right now. Sing in the Receive grace to be faithful. Go ahead and pray. Receive grace to be faithful. I receive grace to be faithful. Shalakada, <laughs> Shalakada,